G'day everyone, Staff here at the TAB. We're going to rattle through the seven games for round nine of the Super Rugby competition, see if we can find an outsider or two for you. Uh, the favourites seem easy to pick, but it's the outsiders that are proving tricky. First up, Mount Monganui, Chiefs hosting the Crusaders. I really do think it's a favourites one here. The Crusaders, they'll probably be favourite in every game of the season. And it's this sort of form from the likes of Sonny Bill Williams. We seem to see great tries from him or Robbie Fruin every week. Just too much size and too much power and pace. It looked like uh, Olafia didn't really want to know about him in the tackle there. But he goes over, scores a try. And this is indicative of how the Crusaders are playing. The, the Chiefs are welcoming back Mulyaina and Donald, it looks like. Tana Umang is on ice. They'll be desperate to get him back to try and shut down this amazing midfield of the Crusaders, but they've got talent right across the park, their forwards and their backs. They'll be too good, but it'll be closer this time, I think. No hiding for the Crusaders, 1-12 to for them. And the feature for me, Matt Todd versus Scott Waldrum. I think the winner of that battle's got the lead in the backup All Black Jersey 7. Next up also on Friday night, we've got the Rebels hosting the Highlanders. Now, I've got a power rating system going where I rate each team out of 10 in all the positions and their goal kicking and their benches. These two sides come out very, very even. In fact, I've got the Highlanders about six points better, but the Rebels are six points, a bit, are six points better at home. So nothing in it. So I'm going to lean towards the Rebels. I know a lot of you won't like me for that, but the Rebels at home, there's something in the water there that gets them fizzing at home. They have a fantastic crowd. I think they might just edge them. Next up is the Blues against the Waratahs. The Blues are consistent now, which is something we haven't been able to say for quite some time, since the 90s probably and they are going along very nicely. A lot of confidence, a lot of good pattern team play in there, but they're going to have to break down this Waratah side who are gaining in confidence as well. They got a lot of confidence last week after some fantastic tries, like this one to Drew Mitchell, running off the outside of Dave Dennis, who's a fantastic workhorse in the forward pack. Good loose forward trio, even without Phil War, the Waratahs. Another close one. The Waratahs won for the first time in Auckland two years ago. I don't think they're going to add to that this week. The, uh, I think the Blues, 1-12 to and a very close one. Also on Saturday night, we see the Reds against the Bulls. The Reds have been fantastic at home and away, winning a couple of times in Africa. Not many teams can do that. And they return home, and you know it's going to be a fantastic crowd because they are welcoming the defending champions, Bulls. But they're calves, the Bulls. I keep uh, dissing them a little bit every week because they beat up the teams that are below them on the ladder and they lose to the teams that are above them. The Reds are as high as you can get. The Bulls are down in eighth. I don't think the Reds are going to get beat. They're scoring good tries like this one to Mike Harris. Wasn't pretty, wasn't flashy like we're used to seeing from the Reds. A nice drive, but they're showing that they can win these tight competitions. They, they're very good at spreading it wide, and I, I keep talking every week about Quade Cooper and what a great visionary he is and can set the back line alight. But I just like their forwards, uh, the guy Daly, the prop Daly, he, he's a good asset for them. And I just think they're going to be too good for the Bulls. Reds, 13 and over. Might surprise you, but I think they'll cane them. Back over to the Republic in the middle of the night. The Lions are hosting the Stormers. And boy, we thought some teams had some issues with injuries. None more so than the Lions. I really did like them for the first month, but they've fallen right away. Stormers were unbeaten until last week, but they got pantsed by the Reds. That'll wake them up. Every team needs a loss to refocus them, and the Stormers will do that. I think they'll beat the Lions very easily, 13 and over. Next game is the Cheetahs against the Hurricanes. Cheetahs hosting the Canes. They are getting better, the Cheetahs, and I think there's some upsets in store for whoever they play. They are gaining in confidence. They went well against the Highlanders last week. And the Hurricanes, well, they just dipped out again. They're losing so narrowly. Got off to a good start. Second charge down in three minutes by Aaron Cruden. Slid over there, some nice ball control. Uh, got them off to a good start, but they just couldn't carry on. Add to that that they lost Cruden at half time. They've lost Conrad Smith. They've travelled over to Africa. I think it might just be a bridge too far for them. Cheetahs by 12 and under, but look for the sneaky number 21 on the bench for the Hurricanes to make an impact. Bodine Barrett, people down here in Wellington have been waiting for him to join the team. That he does be exciting. Next one, and the last one, the Brumbies against the Force. The Brumbies finally got their win last week against the Hurricanes. I think they're ready to beat up some teams. They've got some combinations going quite nicely. Very physical side, and that should be good enough to break down the Force. They got hammered last week. I'm expecting the Brumbies. Return to the Brumbies of old, of sorts. 13 over for the Brumbies there in Canberra. There we are, that's the seven games of the round. I've searched through all the games, trying to find my bet of the week. Was going to say the Rebels 12 and under, but I'm going to go 
for the Reds. 13 and over against the Bulls. I think the form in there is very good. I think they'll score a lot of tries. Uh, maybe four or five tries against the Bulls. Maybe four or five penalties. That should equate to a 13 and over win. And you'll get at least $2.50.